Kill. In 2016, Netflix introduced the world to Eleven, the telekinetic weirdo from the town of Hawkins, Indiana. Inspired by 80s pop culture as well as Dungeons and Dragons, Stranger Things destroyed expectations and had fans begging for more. Whether you're playing in the Upside Down or the Forgotten Realms, I'll show you everything you need to know to make Eleven a playable character in your next campaign. Hold on to your egos for another episode of Pop D&D. Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Martinez and welcome back to another episode of Pop D&D, the show where I teach you how to take your favorite pop culture characters and turn them into D&D adventurers. Today's episode is debuting on Millie Bobby Brown's actual birthday, so I thought it'd be perfect to use this to shout out the breakaway character from Stranger Things 11 in this episode. Now one thing that we're going to be doing for a lot of the child characters in this series is making them halflings. Halflings are essentially the hobbits of Lord of the Rings, and that's where we're going to be using that, generally because of the childlike appearance. Halflings also have two subrace builds, and in this case we're going to be selecting the Lightfoot. That means that for a halfling we're going to get a plus two to dexterity and a plus one to charisma. So with those attribute bonuses, let's go ahead and get our attribute stats going with our traditional 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. We're going to go ahead and take that 15 and put it under Charisma. With that plus one, it'll bring it up to 16, which is something that we want for the character that we're going to be building for 11. Then we're going to put the 14 under Constitution, the 13 with a plus two under Dexterity for 15 total, and then we'll put the rest under Intelligence, Wisdom, and Strength in that order. Halfling characters also come with three trait features, including Lucky, where anytime you roll a one, you get to re-roll and take the next result. Nimbleness, which allows you to move through a space of a larger character, and Brave, which grants advantage against being frightened. Now with Eleven, I knew I wanted to make this a spellcasting character. I wasn't sure though if I wanted to make this a wizard or a sorcerer. What I did finally settle on was making this character a warlock. Now when building a warlock, you have to choose an otherworldly patron to bestow your powers upon you. You can choose the fiend, and in that case you can actually choose Demogorgon as the benefactor of your abilities, but in this case, we're going to be going with the Great Old One as our patron, and this could be any number of great evil beings, even Cthulhu if you want. Now when choosing your background, I went ahead and gave Eleven the Sage background. You could certainly use the Urchin or the Hermit, but in this case, I figured it would be great to use the Arcana and History benefits for your skill proficiencies. For the additional two Warlock skill proficiencies, I went ahead and chose Investigation and Intimidation. Now, Warlocks tend to wear light armor, and the D&D Player's Handbook actually suggests using leather armor. I figured that would be perfect for Eleven's leather coat that we see in Season 2. This way you know your character is going to be bitchy. With leather armor, our AC is going to be 11, plus our Dexterity modifier. In this case, a plus two, giving us a total AC of 13. Finally, I'm touching with equipment. Even though this is a spellcasting character, it's probably going to be a good idea to have some weapons with you. You could certainly choose between Steve Harrington's spiked back, or you could go with Lucas's wrist rocket. In this case, because we get a minus one on the bat, we're going to go ahead and use the wrist rocket. Finally, we come to it, the spellcasting. Warlocks start out with two cantrips and two spells. A cantrip is essentially a spell that you can do at any time. It doesn't take a lot of effort to do, you can do it in a single turn. It's basically a quick spell ready to go. In this case, we're going to be selecting Mage Hand and the Friend's Cantrip. Mage Hand is essentially what we see Eleven doing when she moves objects with her mind, and Friends is exactly that. You can disguise yourself and become friends for a short term with another character. For the two spells, I went ahead and chose Hex, and I chose Dissonant Whispers, which is a bonus spell unlocked by choosing the Great Old One's Boon. Now, casting your spells in D&D 5th Edition is interesting. You have the option of setting a save DC in case someone tries to defend against one of your spells. You also have your standard spell modifier. In this case, you're going to get a plus 2 for your proficiency bonus at level 1, plus you're going to be able to use your charisma modifier. In this case, plus 3. This gives us a total of plus 5. Your save DC in this case is also going to be 8 plus proficiency plus charisma modifier. In this case, 13. A lot of numbers I know, but you'll definitely get the hang of it, and this will be a fantastic character to play as. Finally, as a warlock, you're going to get an HP of 8 plus your constitution modifier 
Plus two in this case gives us 10 HP to start out with. So that's it for this episode. I hope you take this character in your next adventure and turn things up to 11. Let me know in the comments if you guys built this character for yourself and use it in the game. Also, let me know what characters you want to see on the next episode of Pop D&D. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe.